All right. Awesome. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Phil Bavila from the Human Rights Commission. Uh, we do not have a quorum right now. We are waiting on one more member. So I, I don't know if I should officially start the Human Rights Commission meeting or if we could have CSSJC start. Yep. Okay. So yeah, Allegra. CSSJC can start. So my name is Allegra Clark. I am the co-chair of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee. We do have a quorum. So it is 634. We are calling um, our meeting to order. Do I have to do something else? I'm sorry. I have to do the do I have to do the official thing? The the read. Okay. Hold on. I apologize. I was clearly not ready. Um I can read it off Allegra. I think that's fine, right? doesn't have to be a co-chair okay. yeah uh pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021 this meeting will be conducted via remote means members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via zoom or by telephone no in-person attendance of members of the of the public will be permitted but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means Thank you, Philip. Um, so you call the <laughs> attendance? Uh, yes, thank you. I was like, there's something okay. else important I have to do. I'm sorry. I feel like it's That's been all right. since I've done this. Um, okay, Miss Pat, can you hear us? Yeah. And yes, we, here. And we can hear you. Um, Philip, can you hear us? Yes. All right, we can hear you. And Dr. Freke Ete, can you hear us? Are you on mute? You may have had to step away for a moment, perhaps. We can move forward. Okay. Um, so let's see. The purpose, the main agenda item for tonight is a conversation with the Human Rights Commission about the, uh, there is a note in the chat saying that Dr. Frecke's Wi-Fi is a little spotty, but um, hopefully that okay. means he is there and can hear us. Um, so again, the main topic of tonight's joint meeting is conversation with the Human Rights Commission about the town manager and DEI department report that came out in March um, and our joint response to that. Um, so that will be the main action and discussion item. Um, we will have a public comment period both before and after our discussion and there is an opportunity for announcements um, prior to opening up the floor for public comment. The one announcement I would have is that the Amherst African Heritage Reparations Assembly is conducting a survey, a survey, a survey, um, and it's anonymous and it's about race and reparations in the town. So if um, if anyone is interested in that, I believe that there is an Engage Amherst web page for AHRA that you can find it at um, or through the town's website and clicking through to find their committee. Um, and hopefully people will see it around town um, as I know they've been doing some, some outreach to try and get folks involved in filling that out. Um, so that's my announcement. Ms. Pat, you have an announcement? Oh, yes. Uh, to follow up on what you just said, the survey is for all residents. All residents. So okay. people know. I've already filled it out. I encourage, you know, I'm as resident to please, uh, fill out the survey. So I have, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate uh, Ms. Jennifer Moyston for uh, 
being recognized on state level. And um, I saw that on social media, congrats, well-deserved. Thank you for everything you do in our town. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, another announcement is um, CSWG is planning on writing an article um, next month um, post um, Judge Floyd that passed. What has happened in our town? Have we made any progress? So I'm wondering if CSSJC, I can't speak for HRC, uh, for us to consider uh, writing something uh, and send to MS, um, and send to local media to see where we are at. Since 2020, that Joy Floyd was murdered. Um, what progress have our town made? Um, it, it will be telling, you know, where we are after three years. And let's see what else. Yeah. So uh, Dr. D. Shabazz couldn't join us today because um, she has a time conflict. And my understanding is uh, Deborah Ferrara is on vacation, right? I believe so. Okay. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Does anybody else have any announcements to make? I see none. Um, okay. Um, so we can open up our first public comment period. I'm going to read the thing because I found it. During the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public. When called on, please identify yourself by needing you, but by stating your full name, preferred pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their views for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. The CSSJC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, so I see there are seven attendees at this time. If you would like to make a statement, please use the raise hand um, function and we can get you into the room. And there will be a second public comment period at the end of the meeting. I am not seeing any hands up right now. Oh, I am seeing a hand up, Michelle Miller. Um, Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, I just wanted to, first of all, thank you for announcing the AHRA survey. Really appreciate that. Um, and I wanted to uh, just express my gratitude for the listening session that you hosted um, for the um, press department weeks ago now. It was very rich and informative for me, even as someone that is already, you know, sort of in the mix of things. Um, and I just, I hope that lots of folks will be able to engage uh, with the presentation that Earl went through and just sort of the space that you held for that to occur. Um, I just really, on a Saturday, um, just really, really appreciate it. And um, just thank you for for all that, that you do for the community. I'm sorry, I don't say it enough. I'm trying, <laughs> um, I think we all, we're, we're all trying to say uh, thank you more, but I just I want I want you to know how much I deeply appreciate everything that you do for the community. So thank you and have a great meeting. Thank you, Michelle.
not seeing any other hands, there will be another public comment period at the end of the meeting. Um, so I guess we can get into it. Um, let's see. Would, would it make the most sense to share screen? Yes. Jen, can you do that? Because I feel like whenever I try and share a screen, I then lose everything else and I'm not very good at it. <laughs> oh, you're muted. <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> Again, we were only like four years into it and I still, it is still happening. But let me just grab the packet. Um, I'm going to use CSSJC's one since that's the meeting that we're. And. So while you're doing that, I just want to thank um, Philip and Freke for putting, you know, all the information together for us and for your time. And I know you took a lot of. Uh, time to if do you it you can't Thank see you it i don't know what is going on no you can't see it okay. we can see it could you because mine was it was really small on my end mine I could too. See it and then it just went away so um, I don't know where it, went. it was there i see laverne kelly in the attendee oh yay perfect did you find me a quorum now? One, yeah, two, we'll, we will have a quorum once Laverne enters a room. Nice. Okay. Now we can make decisions tonight. <laughs> now we can make some decisions. That's right. Awesome. Okay. Laverne here. My screen just went weird. I'm using a different device tonight. Yes, I do see. Okay. Uh, then I will call the HRC meeting at 645. And I'm just going to call on members to just basically say here and that we can hear you. Uh, Ronnie Parker? Here. Uh, Tyler? You need to continue on. Here. Laverne? Laverne, can you hear us? Maybe my mic is on. Oh, there we go. I hear you now. Okay. All right. And Liz? Here. All right. And of course, I am here as well. So that is our quorum. All right. Thank you so much, um, Allegra, if you want to proceed. OK. Um, so our packet. Let's say that so this is the original letter that was sent to the town council back in July. Um, outlining the steps that we would like to take this is February let's see. So I guess we are looking for something that would be dated in April of this year correct. Did that was that in the packet or was that a separate email? Okay, that was a separate email. Email, so I will have to add it to the oh. packet, oh. and it came from Philip, correct? I believe yes. so. Yes. I'm talking on mute. Yes, it did come from me. <laughs> oh, it's great to know I'm not the only one. Yeah, we're all gonna get through this together, and by yeah. the end of it, we'll all know how to zoom and mute and unmute. But I myself am still struggling. <laughs> I'm a little bit buried here now with open tabs. Can you see it? The Label email two, is up. Two. Um, so the email, not the documents attached. OK. Can you see there it now? There, there you go. There it is. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right, 
So let's see. The first paragraph that starts with background is just kind of, I mean, exactly what it says, the background, um, and then inserts the motion that was passed on November 14th. Um, so those are the seven points. So that's all taken directly from that motion. And then um, there's the list of documents that we wished to attach as amend or appendixes, appendices, appendi, I don't know, <laughs> um, anyway, whatever, whatever they are, the, the documents that will go with the response. Um, and then it's broken out by each specific item. So does it make the most sense to start with the specific items or did anyone have any comments about the background? Um, I see Ronnie's hands up and Miss Pat. Ronnie. Um, so one of the things that was really that has is really striking to me is how long this has been going on, because I'm fairly new to town. So I think of July 5th and I build from that. But in reading these documents, I can see how the same thing has occurred over and over and over. So one of the things I would like to see in the background pa paragraph, that first paragraph, is sort of referencing the dates. And if that's too much to write out, if it makes the background too dense, where the attachments are, you know, the links are, I think it was good, it would be good to put the dates of those things. So the reader is aware that this is something that goes back, you know, many years. This is really about something bigger that may have even anticipated the July 5th and type of incident and prevented it. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing about the time period of the documents is that they're all consistent in that they say the same things. Um, so I think it's important to cite that in the background part of this document. That's my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Ronnie. Um, Ms. Patton. So I, I like how um, the introduction to make it clear that we're centering our response uh, focusing on July 5th incident and also CSWG recommendations. Um, I think the link to CSWG recommendation part A and B that was linked to, people won't read it, that's a lot. So, but the one that uh, Jennifer Moistin sent um, I believe today was actually condensed. The original uh, report for CSWG is about 100 and something pages, um, but we need to highlight what we want people to read. There's a lot of um, things that doesn't even cost money on part B that, that we need to highlight for people to read. So what I'm saying is that we should replace um, the CSWG recommendations, the ones without graphic. Um, those are only 14 pages versus 100 and something pages together would be my suggestion. Because we don't want to lose readers. We should still have links for seven gen, uh, um, research as well as LEAP. Those two documents have to be included, but the actual presentation by CSWG with graphics, I'm just concerned that we might lose people trying to read through everything because some of them have already begun, even though not fully funded like Chris, the, the I, and so on and so forth. I will, I will stop there. 
Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, can I ask a point of, I guess, clarification in that when we submit something to the town council, do we submit it in a in like a format where they could click through links? Like, is it a, this is maybe a question for Jen. Um, like, is that something that has worked in the past? Because I'm imagining if it's, if something is like has links in a packet that the public can't actually like click on those links to get anywhere because it's like PDF-y or oh. you're 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 not muted but you connect with you can link and use the links in the PDFs and so anything that is linked that you send to council in a, as a PDF will still be able to be able to be you will be able to uh, access that information okay perfect thank you for the clarification um Liz Hi, um, I'm looking at the document. I read it earlier. The question I have is I'm seeing the proposals that the town council passed a motion directing the town manager to, but were there any specific timelines attached to each um, plan and where are we in those plans? Because that I think will drive some of our response, maybe. My understanding is that the motion overall just had a report back in four months um, on progress. So it was kind of um, it wasn't there weren't like specific, you know, we will have this in place by X date or anything like that from my recollection of things. Yeah, I think that that was um, done that night, if I remember, on November 14th, because even this four-month deadline to have this uh, go out from town manager was kind of seen as a short time frame. And so I think they wanted it as a more open-ended time frame to get tasks done. So I think that that could be a recommendation that we put in there as well under um, the conclusion of having a more solid deadline because yeah I, I i hear you liz we could be talking in 2025 and mm -hmm. still on number seven or number six whatever it is and that to me would be concerning to ronnie's point that this has clearly been work done many years prior to the july 5th incident so i think that's a good point to add in at the bottom if i may i think it's good observation uh liz and also Ronnie, and this is what we've been dealing with, with our town government, our town officials, derail, derail, and derail. That's the strategy. It, this is not accidental. It was done on purpose, no timeline deadline. That's what we see in this town. And that's the elephant in the room because this issue is not priority to them. This is done purposefully just to say we did something check off the box so i'm glad that some of you you know uh observed it you know cswg we we saw that too we had to push a little bit and we need I'm, to do that here i'm looking at um some of the 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 bullet the points <clears throat> and one of them was about a youth empowerment center and or and or a training set, um, center and not to say that may 2nd is gonna go positive or negative but i'm thinking if you're gonna build a new school if that goes through you have an existing school wildwood in a few years that could be used for some of those things a youth center for our kids it's got a gym in there it's got office it's got classrooms um I don't know what the what they were going to do with Wildwood once if Fort Rivers um, new building passes and they move the Wildwood children to um, Fort Rivers area, there's going to be a building there. And what is what is going to happen with that building? And I can see there's two things here that that building could be used for if they plan correctly. Thank you, Liz, for mentioning that. 
I think yeah. it's been um, certainly on the minds of CSWG and CSSJC as well. Um, However, yeah. very good point. I think what we're pushing for, I hope, is that you know the youth center, while you know the uh, Wildwood School in four or five years, it will be a good site. What we're saying right now is that it doesn't have to be a bigger, a big space. Even two, the town can rent two spaces for youth center to get it going. What the town is trying to do is quote unquote do youth programming out of the schools, uh, current schools that we have. And that's traumatic for some of our youth. And that's not what CSWG recommended. Some kids go to school because it's the law. So they're, they're sick and tired of, you know, after school weekend to sit in that building that trauma, you know, that is not very positive experience for some kids. So I hear the Wildwood School, I'm all for it, but right now we're talking this year, rental spaces for youth center, find space for biocultural center. Yeah. When white people need something, it gets done right away. Jones Library, trustees, and their group, they got what they want. And so we shouldn't wait till four or five years. We need something now, this year. And then in five years, let's talk about if the program needs to move to Wildwood School. I it's agree. I, would say. I agree. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a really good point. I think for the sake of document and to get through this, I think we should probably just break it down kind of like how we are doing like background and links. So if anybody has anything else to add for background or links, you could raise your hand. I have already made notes and I think that's an excellent idea, Ronnie, to add in dates nets to the links. That's pretty easy to do as most of the documents are dated themselves. So I can go back in there and do that. And um, are we all in agreement that both the CSSJ start CSSWG CSWG, oh my gosh. Who are we? <laughs> <laughs> the CSWG part A and part B be taken out and put in the shorthand link recommendation that is in the packet, or do we want all three of them? Uh, I, what, Ronnie, I, I see, oh, go ahead, Allegra. Are we voting with our hands or are we? Um, I yeah. had. A comment, I was answering the question. I also would I have an opinion on short link. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's hear Ronnie first, and then we'll go to you, Allegra. Yeah, I think the link should be there, and I found the reports though long to be very very powerful. They have very good table of contents, so if you don't want to read the whole thing, it's pretty easy to see where things are. And I think anyone who takes the time to click on a link actually wants to know more. And the assumption isn't that they will read the whole thing, but maybe there should be just the section, you know, I mean, I always just go to the table of contents. I just sat down yesterday and read the next gen report and it completely, even though I'm very interested in the topic, but I was always switching, going to sections that I wanted to know about. I think it's good to have it there so you can access the whole. So I guess I'm in favor of having it. Okay. Uh, maybe a summary of the short version could be in the front of it. Great. Sort of like an executive summary. Thank you. Yep. And I won't be mad if you decide otherwise. Okay. <laughs> Allegra? Um, two things. One, I don't know if it might help in the background to put some sort of statement before, like, I guess, Following the incident, the CSSJC met with council in August, October, November, um, and has attempted, you know, for April and has not been able to meet. Just to, sh to, to show that this has been an ongoing thing, we've been trying to meet with them. It's been pushed off, pushed off, pushed off um, in terms of meeting. Um, and, and then those can, those kind of link up with the different documents that are there. And I think, like Ronnie said, I think having the full document for all those reports is important and having just like 
the summary of recommendations is important. So I don't know why we couldn't do both. Um, to say, you know, this is a this is the summary of the recommendations. Click here for the full report. Click here, maybe, uh, you know, because yeah. I think having access to both could be helpful. Okay, I'll make note of the CSS trace. I might, um, if you could help me with that as well, because I'm my timeline is shaky with the meeting times that we met in August and October, and November, yeah. all those other dates. But yes, uh, Miss Pat. I mean, it's understandable if people didn't read the documents that um, Ms. Jennifer sent out today, I believe, or yesterday, like very soon. Um, so a couple of things. One is that the big, um, the main recommendations, the presentation by CSWG, my concern is that some of the counselors will go, well, we've done this. Haven't we done this? We've done this. Another concern is that CSSJC was actually created to make sure that odd recommendations are implemented. I think what the, the public know is DEI press and maybe anti you know racism work you know in the police department, but there are other important um issues that were recommended by CSWG. I'm just concerned that the whole document that is 100 and something pages, you know, people are going to get lost as to what, what is it that we're demanding. So I'm very concerned that we're going to do that link. That is already a 14 page that basically focused on what our town government has not implemented. And that was sent out to us today. So what I'm trying to say is redundant that we have those 14 pages and then we have the entire CSWG doc, uh, presentation. We will still have link for the LEAP report and also for the seven gen, we will have that. But to have the part A and B as was presented in 2021, I just feel that people will pick and choose and will get lost again. And it might be different from for HRC, but CSSJC, we need to remember that we also need to raise awareness about Part B recommendation. That's what I'm trying to say, that we not include the bigger one, the one with graphics is what I'm advocating for. Because I spoke to some of the CS, uh, WG members as well. Yeah, I, I hear that. And uh, does someone else have their hand up or no? Am I missing that on the screen? No. I, I think then we either I mean, a decision needs to have to be made. So I guess it's going to go up to a vote is what it's going to go down to for HRC. I don't know, like, or is that how you want it to be done for CSSJC? That sounds good. Um, okay, so what we're voting for is in favor of keeping, or not keeping, of putting in the sh short link and taking out the CSS, the part A and part B of the CSWG recommendation so if you vote your vote will be in favor of yes to remove those two and put in the shorthand and no would be to keep the two and also put in the shorthand so does that make sense i'm seeing some links stairs so a yes vote would be remove the the part a Long the one. reports and only put in the shorthand Yes. A no vote would be keep the original reports and and additionally put in the shorthand. Yes. Okay. All right. So I have the question: <laughs> What would be the benefit of having both version, the the long version and the short version, because it will be repetitive? I'm just curious. What is the reason for that? 
I mean, my reasoning would be, I think, to Ronnie's point is that people looking at this document to look at the full CSSW, uh, CSWG report, because even in my finding, I mean, I had to go to the town website and find CSWG's old homepage and then pull up the report. And so that was a, a search on my end that I would be looking for, as opposed to if I saw this and I chose to choose on the link, that would be my recommendation for pushing it through. That's my because that, that similar document is just that the short version of but A and B is condensed without graphics, without repetition. It's fine, let's vote. Let's see how we, we do the yeah, vote. Well, before we vote, oh. Jen has her hand up. <laughs> yeah. Point of order. So first, um, I would just say that they're, they're just links. So it, it, you know, it, people can click on them or not, but more to the point of before you guys vote, you have to vote as two different separate groups. And right. I also need you guys to create motions so that you're not just saying, hey, do you guys want to Thank you. That's it. Can I piggyback off of Allegro's motion or do we have to <laughs> really word for word say one? Uh, well, we need someone to make the motion. Okay. Can Philip make the motion since he's in both and then we both can vote the same thing? All right. All right. All right. Then Motions motion. are coming from chairs, I think. Okay. All right. At least. <laughs> I motion to... What am I motioning for again? I motion to keep both links with the addition of adding on the shorthanded link for, into the CSWG conversation. Is that good enough? I'm seeing mm -hmm. Jen's eyes and I know that's not good enough. Jen, you're on mute. I just need a little more detail. So motion to keep both links. What are both links? Because okay. well, to me, I both links. To keep both part mm -hmm. A and part B of the CSWG report with the addition of adding in the shorthanded recommendation link. So the I CSWG need someone report. to second that. So the second. I second. Oh, Ronnie, got it. Oh, sorry. Is this the CSSJ? No, no, no. You're sorry. good. You were, you're yeah, good. Okay. But can I just clarify that now the yes and no would be reversed? Yes. Okay. For what, Philip? Yes. yes. I'm sorry, everybody. Hang in there. We're going to get through this. <laughs> and so Allegra now needs to motion herself. Could that not be the same motion from no? I, I think you guys can have the same motion. But so first, Ronnie seconded, then you need to open it up for discussion. And then after that, I need the HRC members to vote on it. Okay. I didn't see that uh, part. I was typing, so maybe you did, but I right, didn't. Right. HRC, any discussion on that? I have a comment before. Can I have a comment, quick comment about yep. the motion? Go ahead. Okay. I think it would be more clearer if we are voting on keep long version and short version, something like that, because they're the same document. It's just that not everything was included in the short version that the town has started implementing. We're talking about the same document. Right, but so long version and short version. Is what I'm trying to say to 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 do the motion that way. Does that make sense? My understanding is that the motion is not long and short, but all three. They're not three, though. That's what I'm trying to say. They're not they, three. They are three links. They're not three different materials. They're not three but they're a, B, and shorthand. There's A, B, and condensed version. No, 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 no. The condensed version is A and B. Back I know, I know, but A yeah. and B are longer versions. So the reader can choose a link to just read the condensed version, or the reader can choose a link to read the full version of part A or the full version of part B. That's what the motion is saying, to put all of that there. So yes, the same information appears twice, 
but there are different links and the reader makes the choice about whether you're reading the whole long thing or just the little thing. And I just, I just want to say too that the benefit of having both is that if the reader want, reads the short one and then says they want to find out more information, yeah. they don't have to go searching through our website for a, right. a, a committee that's been sunsetted and then find that information. I mean, we want people to read all of and everything if they're going to, right? So the more people, I mean, that's the, the my personal opinion is that we want people to read all of it, whether they do or don't we don't know, but we have to give them the opportunity to read as, you know, all of them, if, or whichever they choose, if that makes sense. I, to my brain right now, and that is, what if, because the short version is only 14 pages, why don't we put it in the body of our report? Because this is something that CSSJC are charged to do, to make sure that, you know, the recommendations are actually implemented. So it's in the body, and then that will be a reference. If you need to read more, I go think, to this link for the two comprehensive version or something like that. I think in the I just body don't we, want people to get, you know, not read the part B. Right. And that's, in, yeah. In the body, we do have like C CSWG report, and we can just link also that to in there so that way it is in there. I, I hesitate, the document is already five pages and even in that I was kind of like, is the town council even gonna read this or Paul even gonna read this as being five pages? If we now add on 14, then that's 20 pages. And to your point, Miss Pat, if we're concerned about the CSWG report, part A and part B being long, this would also be a concern of mine if our report to the town manager then is now 20 pages in the response. But we want it to be 20 pages. It has to be long pages. The main thing, people will read it. I So I just have to interrupt real quick yeah. and say that I need the HRC to continue back with their motion. Yes. Right. And then yeah. Ms. Pat, you can hop in during the CSSJC. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Yeah. So discussion on HRC, anybody have anything? Seen some head shakes, not seen anything. All right, if that is it. So again, reminder is a yes vote is to add in all three links. A no vote is to only add in the short link. So I will just call as I see you on my screen, Ronnie Parker. Yes. Liz Haygood. Yes. Laverne. Yes. Tyler. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So Allegra, I think that is your cue to make a motion now. Okay, now I have to move the same thing that Philip did, which I, um, let's, so I move to include the link to the condensed version in addition to the, the sorry, Jen's giving me the look click. I need to be more specific. Um, <laughs> The so I move to include the condensed version of recommendations from the CSWG's reports in addition to links to both part A and part B of the original reports. So a yes vote would include three, and a no vote would replace the two original links with the condensed version. There um, how does this work? It, can I make an um, amendment? No. Yes. No? We I should have, have to have a second first, and then there's an amendment made. Ah, oh. Robert, your rules. Also, I get Roger, whose who's rules are we following? <laughs> We're just making up our rules. <laughs> that's, so wait, did you? That's, yes, did that's me second. Thank you, Philip. OK. Um, and now Ms. Pat can make an amendment. The amendment is if the 14 page short version recommendation could be in the body of our report and then have link to other two long version. Is there a second to that amendment? Right, I have to second the amendment, Jennifer. Do 
don't hear a second. Um, so I believe that. Oh, Brian, this is not good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe. Debra and D. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I believe the amendment fails. So the motion on yes, the floor no. okay. is the original motion. Okay. <laughs> Don't <me> to repeat it. <laughs> you know what you're doing? You're no. fine. <laughs> Clearly, Just, all these rules and regulations. I We're gonna you know what? I'll open it along. Up. Let's move on. Open it for discussion. And if so, there's no discussion, then vote, please. Okay. Does anyone no from CSSJC have anything to say about the motion on the floor? No? Okay. So we can vote. And I will vote based, I will call on screen. First, I see Philip. Yes. Okay, Miss Pat? No. Freke? Yes. And I am a yes. Okay. Um, so. Okay, so then that means that we will be adding in the three links seeing that CSSJC and HRC voted a yes. Oh, who left? No one left, okay. Uh, Jen, can you pull back up the document? Oh, Jen, you're talking on mute. Yes, I have a few documents open, so please be patient. Mm -hmm. While Jen's opening up that document, I think um, if no one else has anything for background or links, then let's move on to um, number one. And if anybody has anything, oh, I, Allegra. Do we want to add um, the letter from one of the parents that had gone to town council earlier as a link, Mr. Stewart's letter? Um, or might some of that information be included in the broader document that the families had put together if that is still a document that? Yes, um, um, I was going to say something before the end of the meeting. The document from the for the MS5, meaning BIPOC families, is ready. Oh. So- um, Does it include? The, the document that Allegra is talking about or say anything about that document? Which document? Um, the letter that had gone out, it was from one of the parents. It was, it no, was Bill no. Stewart, right? Bill no, Stewart talking not about that the one. Bill Stewart no. letter, that was different. No, the BIPOC families prepared a report. Okay. So do we know when the town council wants to meet with us? Is um, it next Monday? So the town council had offered a time slot at five o'clock again which was what they had originally offered at the beginning of april that we said wouldn't work because of work schedules mm -hmm. so what i have done is i have invited the town council to the cssjc meeting on may 10th because um i'm because that way we can just that can be the focus of the meeting and there won't be any other things that might push it back or shorten the discussion or anything like that. I am still waiting for confirmation um, because I think the other date that Lynn had given was May 6th. May, one of the teens, May, whatever that week is that has a teen number in it for May. Um, and I believe that is in the middle of like their budget forum stuff too. So again, it doesn't seem like it would be a meeting that would solely be focused on this discussion. I see Freke has his hand up. Um, I thought there was another hand up, except I... I'm misreading, but um, with what you said, I was under the impression that we weren't having a meeting in May, or are we? We have, yes, yes, 
SKC, we have a meeting May 10th, second okay. Wednesday. Yes, we do. Okay. I believe our original intent was not to have a meeting in April because yeah. we thought we were going to meet with them at the beginning of the month and then yeah. it got pushed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Ro Ronnie? I'm not completely clear on the budget schedule for the town, but I fear that as it gets put pushed forward, you know, we'll miss having anything to say about the budget. And some of these items, as we talk about them, I'll raise my budget concerns. But I think it, if we wanted to get in this year's budget, I think it, we really need to push to at least address that piece. I know I'm not being specific enough to be helpful, but that's because I don't really know the budget cycle of the town yet. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I fear that's what's going to happen somehow because it's going to be May when we meet and then usually June, then there's the summer, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe somebody else knows better what the sort of how we would have to work now to ensure that we get consideration in the upcoming budget. Thank you, Ronnie. Miss Pat. So um, it wasn't what I wanted to say, but my understanding is that you know the budget process it will start from the fall, and part of you know, having CSSJC is to advise the town on different issues. We've made effort to invite like the um, finance director to CSSJC. He has never showed up. The finance committee could have put us on their agenda to present our budget proposals. It did not happen because this is a majority BIPOC committee. We don't matter. We're being ignored. That's the truth. So we're in April and it's like almost tail end of budget season. The data manager has, uh, you know, we're presenting his recommendation or maybe he already did. But I, I mean, we can try to push for it, but one of my frustration is that the council leadership lane has not utilized the talent with CSSJC and HRC, including lived experiences. I can't speak for HRC, but we're being ignored. They check the, you know, check box. We've created CSSJC. I don't know if that, you know, answers your question, but the thing is that they do not want to involve, involve us, but we have to push. They did the same thing with CSWG. It's the same pattern, the same pattern. That's all I can say. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and just as a point of clarification, I do believe that the budget is due um, May 1st, um, and there should be a series, okay, let me see. There is a, um, there is a, Council will receive the budget on May 1st, um, and it's likely that at that time they would refer the budget to the Finance Com Committee, which should meet on May 2nd to begin the budget review, May 5th again, May 9th, um, and actually on May 12th is the, at 1 p.m., the Finance Committee is meeting about the public safety and community services portion of the budget. Um, and then May 15th is the public hearing on the budget, which I believe was the date that was offered to us as a meeting. So I believe that would be a tricky day to meet since if a public forum is happening, typically people might show up to that public forum and public comment can go on for hours. So. There's no guarantee that if we said, okay, we're meeting with you at 7.30, that we wouldn't be waiting until 10.30 to 
you know, get on with them. Um, and then it looks like the vote on the budget is June 12th, perhaps. Um, I believe that is the calendar um, that was sent to me by somebody the other day. Um, so yeah, yeah, it does look like on the calendar, it seems like that uh, final action plan that says town council action on budget on June, 2023. So I think if we have that May 10th timeline, if they are able to come to CSSJC meeting, as well as we need to open it up if HRC is able to attend. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things we're going to see in our meeting as well, that that, that would meet it in time before the budget is finalized. And it would be two days before the community safety, no, the public safety and community services portion of the finance committee discussion. So it could be a somewhat timely discussion if the May 10th meeting would work for the council um it's still later in the game than i would like to be but um perhaps better late than never perhaps but not. hydra did submit cssjc budget priorities what we were what we're pushing for to her and it's also included in a packet as a response to a town manager's report as well. So if people are wondering, it is included and they already have it. Lynn has it. So let's see what she can do um, yeah. with it. I see Jen has her hand up and then. Um... So I, I'm sorry, I had to take a, a phone call regarding one of my kiddos. And so okay. I just, I didn't know where you guys were with the whole understanding of the budget, but I pulled up the budget calendar. So I don't know if you guys referenced that or not, or use that. So you have an idea of what's happening. I was looking at something called consolidated meeting planning that was sent from Athena. Okay. To That's going to most likely have all of the same. Yeah. You have June 13th as the date that they're. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Uh, For, uh, I guess um, this is an open ended question to HRC. Are people able to make that May 10th if council is able to make May 10th? And our meeting CSSJC Allegra starts at 6 30? Yes. I think so. okay. so, do we have contingent plan if? The town council can meet with us on May 10th. Do we know what we want to do? If they can make it. I mean, I can we can open it up to the HRC meeting, which it would be the 17th at 630 if you all are able to do that. CSSJC. And other than that, if I mean, they can't make Wednesday the 17th. If you know, the only time that is convenient for Council right. losses on Mondays if they can. What is our plan? That's that's fair. I will tell you what I'm thinking. <laughs> More than anything else, I would like our report to go to the media so that we know where our town government is, you know, in terms of the so-called equity and you know uh, addressing racism in our town. Right. We just need to send it out. I don't see issue with that and we obviously would have to vote as bodies but once this report is finalized and we send it off to town council i think it can be as public as anybody would like it to be yeah so i will suggest that allegra you reach out to the the council president again you know, to get confirmation so that we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. If they can't meet with us May 10th, I would strongly recommend to just send the document to the media, you know. And is May 10th okay for HRC? I think was that, that was agreed upon. Is that all right, HRC? Laverne, I'm seeing Ronnie shake your head. Laverne, yep. Liz? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. 
And Tyler? Yeah, it works for me. Perfect. And then we would have a quorum. So yes. Okay. So tomorrow I will reach out to Lynn. I will say we confirmed at our meeting that both bodies could make the May 10th. Please let us know if council will be able to attend. And yeah. Not, Just confirming we're talking about evening, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 30. Yeah. So, same time so, as this meeting. So one more thing, I think one of the asks is to have the report to the town councilors five days to meeting. Mm -hmm. So I'm right. assuming, so the next time we meet is May 10th and uh, because of open meeting law, what is our game plan in terms of approving the vinyl version? Because you know the town councilors needs to get this yeah. five days prior to the joint meeting. I thought that that's what you guys were doing now. I thought so too. Right. <laughs> oh, but okay. I think that's what I thought. Just so. making it with the amendments <laughs> and then <laughs> okay. So we're just making final amendments and then I just need to ask quickly, Allegra. I'm sorry to cut you off. Mm -hmm. no. Um, is is the May seventeenth option for the H for council to attend the HRC not an option? It's an option. Oh, I can't speak for everybody. I'm um, I think I can do May 17th. Breke, is that an okay date for you if the 10th doesn't work for council? And then I would just say we would push our regular meeting to only that date, not have two meetings. So the question is um, between May 10th and May 18th. Uh, 17th. 17th. May 17th. Okay. Give me a moment and I'll get back to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Wait a minute, isn't that graduation period? May the, I don't know no. about the high school. No, no. I, um, no, I mean colleges. I think when is they're, graduation? they're, what's that one in May, the Memorial Day weekend? I think, um, okay, Liz is not available the 17th from the chat. Okay. Um, I believe both UMass and Amherst are graduating Memorial Day weekend. Oh, okay. Hampshire College is the week before, I believe. Okay. Which is 20 something or 17? It's still, I think we're still in the, the 20th. I don't, yeah. May okay. 17th is a Wednesday. So yeah. nobody's graduating on Wednesday. I don't believe anybody's graduating on Wednesday. Okay. So should we move back to the document then? Yes. Or Freke, you have your hand up. Yes, um, I believe May 10th works for me on okay. Wednesday. Okay. Yes. Okay. Right. But not you. 17. It works more than 17th. Okay. Thank okay. You. <laughs> okay. So it looks like we're leaning towards 10th then. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I have to say again, I'm so sorry. So sorry. So if the town council can meet with us on May 10th, then what? So that would be no meeting? I will, um, no CSSJC meeting? No, 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 no. If the town council cannot meet with us on May 10th, because it looks like some of our members may, may not be available on the 17th. Mm -hmm. So what is our amount? I'm asking again because of open meeting law, we can't do stuff without an, you know, announcing and all that protocol. Mm -hmm. what, is our, what is our backup plan? Well, I think we said it. We said that we would make it public. We'd go send it out to media. And I mean, it, it's got to be out there either way if they meet with us or not. Is that what you're going off of? Yeah, I just want to make sure because that's that's what I have in my head. So I want to make sure uh, whether or not they meet with us, um, we'll still have the document for them. We'll still send it to them and to the media. Got it. Okay. So should we look at then the first bullet point response? Um, yeah, I think if we just say, Number one, and if anybody has anything to add or change or mm -hmm. 
So now would be your time to raise your hand. So then Allegra or I can see you and then we can go from there. So if you have any comments on number one, Ronnie. So um, after writing this and submitting my comments, you know, I like number one, but it occurred to me when I got to the end that by saying, yes, go ahead with this, we're really saying start over. And, you know, as I've read these other documents, the visioning has already been done. Exactly. So I would like to propose that instead we say, identify the gaps in the visioning that has been done so far, like what was left out, and then go forward with the strategy. And the second concern I had, which I'm not sure I put in my notes, was that when I actually looked at what the training of trainers, uh, they did, it was largely work with town staff, which I think is fine. I have no issue with town staff at all. But if it is going to be a visioning exercise, I really liked what the next gen people did, which was they got people from the community to go out and talk to other people. So it seems like the training of trainers should be targeted to people with the, within the community, not just the town staff. I don't, I don't know how comfortable people are with town staff. I'm very comfortable with them, but I, you know, I mean, it's a community visioning, right? So I may have misread that. So I'm just proposing that we say, identify the gaps in the visioning that's already been done so we can be efficient with our time and our money. So we're not redoing the same thing. Anyway, that's my comment. And again, you know, I, I don't take offense, so if you're, we'll go however people want to go. Oh, and can I just, this is when I always have a hard time whether I should say something or not, but um, the, the visioning and the train the trainer is not limited to the town staff. We just haven't moved that <clears throat> far out. And I think that the report says both. It's just that it lists, it actually lists out everybody from the town side. It doesn't list the community members because we probably wouldn't do that and B, we don't have them all yet. So we've just really begun with the, tr the training. So that's all I'm gonna add to it. Thank you. Yeah, so that's not a big deal. For me, the thing just is add to what's already there because somehow what's there was not accepted. For some reason, something was perceived as being missing from it. What's missing? What did they miss? Go to that is what I would say. Yeah. Ronnie, does the line that says also intentional outreach should be made to marginalized communities? Does that cover kind of what you're what you're saying and in, in put with, with Jen? <clears throat> Um, I think that does cover it. What it doesn't cover, what this doesn't cover for me is just that it's a repetition and it's throughout. Um, what they're proposing is very good, but it's the same thing that others have done. So there's a little frust, you know, I would almost just send one, a one paragraph response saying, all of this is great because it is great. It's just that it's been done again. And what is this going to add to what's been done that will give it legitimacy? So uh, may, may I'm I sorry to be difficult something? here, but if you all are okay with this, I mean, sentence by sentence, it's fine. Um, so, you know, I mean, I'm not going to hold it up and hold us up at 741 at night, especially. Because yeah, it's it's good. I mean, I'm not opposed to it overall. I'm just thinking about all the stuff beforehand. Okay. Miss Pat. May I clarify something? So what you have on CSWG recommendation, because I was a member, was that uh, we invited Dr. Barbara Love and Jennifer helped me out here. Um, we met with her, with her openly, and we liked what she said, what she suggested about visioning. And then what you, what you have in the recommendation is what she sent to us. So when I read what the DEI director, Ms. Pamela, you know, has sent to us, I'm assuming it will also, there will also be other groups within our town beside uh, town employees is my assumption. So there has not been any visioning done. Those are just what Dr. Barbara Love, you know, thinks that, you know, 
the visioning should look like. And that's what you have in CSWG recommendation. Does that make sense to people? I just want to- And we are- the I just we want have, to put out the recommend uh, the clarification. And we have met with Dr. Barbara Love who will be doing the visioning, um, but we just haven't finished, finalized all of the contract pieces. And so she's, you know, people are, you know, in and out of town. And so um, we are including Dr. Love in this process. This right. is her that, process. That's in the town manager's memo as well that Dr. Love is it, looking to be the consultant and hopefully finalized, I believe. It was something that may or something, but yeah. And what I'm saying is that what you see in CSWG document is from Dr. Love, is what I'm saying. Dr. Barbara okay. Love is what I'm saying. That's good to know. So that way. Yeah, that's um, why I want to clarify. It's, it's yes. almost the same work is just being continued on by the same consult consultant. So that is. No really work has been done yet. Okay. It hasn't been done yet. The we proposed requested... work is going to be then continued by the person, Dr. Love. No, 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 no. No visioning has been done yet. Okay. Oh, sorry, I'm not. What you have in CSWG document is what we got from Dr. Barbara Love. Okay. A that proposal, it will look like. correct? A proposal from Dr. Love. Thank you. Proposal. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah. So the Pro proposed work yes. from Dr. Love will be continued by Dr. Love. Yes. Yeah. The contract is just being finalized. Yeah. And she did not solicit for that. We, the CSWG, advocated to for the town to consider her to do the work for the town. So does anybody have anything else about number one that is questionable or they we think we can go ahead with leaving that as is? Um, sorry, up a little bit, yeah. Um, I think... No, my apologies. I was okay. scrolling through looking at it and then I realized that I was sharing the screen. <laughs> yes. Um so do we do we want I, to, should I, we just you go, Philip? <laughs> yeah, no, I think let's if no one has anything, let's just keep moving and then at the end of it we can motion to okay. basically accept the overall draft since that way we went through it for time wise. So that way we don't have to go one by one. That's except, right. <laughs> yes. Thanks. Yeah. So let's go move on to number two, if no one else has comments about number one. Sorry, just, just a small comment. Um, I think point eight, suggestions made by the town manager seem more pro-police. Police, it may be right, uh, but I don't think it really belongs here because we're really being asked to comment on what the DEI proposed. Um, not what the town manager has said, so I would say delete that. Otherwise, I'm okay with number two. Well, I think it's town manager and DI direct. The letter that was sent was by the town manager with Pamela um, as well. So it's both parts. Then I would add um, and the DI, if that's what you're saying. I think it needs. This is this is a strong statement. And I think you just have to, th I think we just have to think about what is behind it and what I'm not protecting the town manager, but it's just like, what are we going, what benefit are we getting from it? And what's the risk at every point that we make? Yeah, um, no, that's, that's fair. Are you talking about line eight? Yeah. I did I have, that, don't, I don't, I did I have, have that impression yeah. in reading the document, so. I'm just wondering if we should say whose recommendation, because the document did emphasize the requirements of the police for a resident oversight board, but not the requirements from the community side. So, yeah, so I, I would say just take it out, but obviously your others have other thoughts. Allegra. 
I mean, I know that I had written that as a note in my thinking, and I don't remember specifically now what it was referring to. But I guess my overall concern with the idea of a resident oversight board in the first place is that many of them get put into place and don't have any actual teeth or aren't aren't able to really serve up accountability in the way that it's needed. Um, just from some of the research that I've done. So I, I think, you know, I can't speak to exactly what I was commenting on in, in that statement. Um, and I don't know if other people felt the same way, but I guess my concern would just be, um, and I know I know Dee has talked a lot about like the need to have subpoena power to, to be able to do anything worthwhile, um, for example. And uh, so I just, I, I'm fine if people feel like that statement is too vague and doesn't specify what it's related to and wants to take it out I think um I think the statement could change to say like overall we hope the oversight board will increase accountability of police rather than um maintain the status quo that would be a friendly amendment to the to the statement um but I see Tyler um, so I don't know if Tyler had something to add about that line. Is it frozen? Yeah, I, no, um, I agree with Ronnie about the strength of the statement. Um, I think that a statement that's as strong and I guess accusative as that really would need to be backed up by some specific examples or some sort of elaboration. Um, since otherwise it's highly accusatory and inflammatory, but not so much constructive. Uh, but I do think that it would be worthwhile to include some sort of note like Allegra was um, mentioning about the necessity of having actual teeth to a resident oversight board uh, about subpoena power and such, because that is definitely an important part of it. And it would really be a shame to see a pretty important institution uh, that's probably way overdue end up getting used more as a shield for um, police or as a PR stunt than as an actual source of accountability and uh, development of safety. So if there was some sort of amendment made to number eight to say, you know, the vision of a resident oversight board would be a, create accountability and um i i don't know how to word it um would you say that's addressed in number six because we do we do say that the oversight board will operate independently and that it will it will you know it will get data from the police and monitor well um independent operation would be one part of it but i think subpoena power would be separate and probably would also require more specific action from the town council um, than just the independence alone, which I think um, sort of backs uh, Allegra's suggestion of amending point A to address that more specifically. But I think um, Ms. Pad has uh, something to say. Ms. Pad, go ahead. So I appreciate what both Ryan, Tyler, and Allegra had said, for me, and I think I bring a different perspective since Deborah is not here, but Jennifer may relate. Um, when I read that, actually, I interpreted it differently because I know what CSWG went through to push, you know, for a resident oversight board. It's not um, recommendation, 
that our town government wanted it to happen. And we can see since 2021 that we submitted our recommendation, meaning CSWG, I'm not speaking for everyone, but um, nothing has happened yet. We're yet to create the board. So when I read that, I said, whoever wrote this, it put me back two years ago of what we went through to even have something. And even the LEAP recommendation is never, is no longer being used or talked about because what LEAP recommended is not what our town wants to hear. I encourage our residents who are listening or who will listen to the YouTube to please take their time and read the LIP report. Our town is pro-police. I don't know why we're skating around word. It's the truth. It is the truth. Our town doesn't want resident oversight to exist with power so that, you know, whoever are selected on this committee can actually do their work. They don't want it. Our town government is pro police. It is what it is. So that's how I read it. I read it from what we went through two years ago. So what I'm saying is leave the sentence the way it is, if it's okay with people. I don't really have much to say about the sentence structure itself. I just do want to say that it's very interesting the way that the the who governs the police so right the union governs the police and the union negotiations have either already happened or or halfway through and so all of this stuff needed to be discussed then at the beginning of the union negotiation so i don't need like I, i'm just a little bit like if you i i just want to make that note that all of this stuff like subpoena power and um anything else would have to go through the union of the police department first, because you're taking something away from the police department. You can't do that without checking in with the union. And so whatever, however that happened or why it happened the way that it did, that's what happened. But I, you can't, I just want to make sure that people understand like those things can't just happen without the union. I, I, certainly hear that and i think there's even been references to like the town lawyer having to get involved with anything um so there's that um tyler yeah um this is kind of a little bit of a tangent but i was kind of wondering is our crest responders under the same union as the police department no no, so all right, department. yeah. Um, because I'm kind of wondering how that's gonna factor in because the more responsibility that Crest gets, the more it starts to undermine the uh, negotiating power of the police union. Um, certainly not completely undermining it, but it does start to provide an alternative um, mechanism to emergency response that, begins to make the police union and police department have a bit less of a monopoly. So I do wonder how they're going to respond to that and whether that's something that the uh, police union might start taking an increasing interest in going forward. Yeah, so I guess for number eight, we either are striking it completely or we're amending it or we're leaving it. So I don't know if someone wants to take that on. <laughs> with I propose striking it. Just because of time and whatever, because I don't think it gives us anything. And it but it does, it is uh, inflammatory, it does attack, and it doesn't say exactly what we intend to say. Uh, so we can either decide to rebuild it, which would take some time, or just get rid of it. 
So in the interest of efficiency, I propose just deleting it. Can I suggest that maybe we add the word accountability into number four? So if we're trying to set a standard for police resident interaction to international standards of human rights. Um, and monitor accountability, something like that, just because yeah. I do think that it's an important piece of why, why there should be a resident oversight board. Um, I just am not coming up with elegant, <laughs> this is happening, so. I do agree <laughs> that this section would benefit from having the word accountability in it somewhere. Number four. In many places, yeah. 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 Um, so the standard for police resident interaction to international standards of human rights. Um, and maintenance of accountability. I, I, I <laughs> standard for police resident interaction. And accountability, interaction and uh, interaction and accountability. Oh, somebody has Tyler. So, has yeah, maybe something roughly like this. What I sort of was trying to throw in there was like a adjective, like meaningful. I actually think that's an adverb uh, for um, ensuring accountability. But I think it might be a little important to have something about uh, effectual enforcement and investigative mechanisms. I think that that sort of wording kind of emphasizes that our focus here is on stuff like subpoena power that would let um, a resident oversight board have actual ability to conduct its investigations and give some teeth to it, both its investigations and to its determinations. I like the wording in the chat. Can we replace number eight with the, the chat wording with that? that can we do that? <laughs> And, and by we, I mean Jen. Can we take a vote? Because I'm comfortable with, you know, we need to use strong words. Um, that's what get people's attention. I don't think this is any accusation. It's the fact. It is fact. Our town government is pro-police. What is wrong with that? It's not a question of whether it's a fact. It's a question of us giving feedback on a proposal to do some work. And the proposal, there's nowhere in the proposal where the town manager says anything about pro-police. So for us to say this, I like, Thank Tyler's, Thank actually, I like Tyler's version. I'm happy to go with that. As Can a, we take a vote? Um, even if I, I'm, I don't mind if I'm in minority and voting, but I want to... <laughs> you know, speak my conscience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I, yeah. Agree with you. I think I'm we're still, way. I think we take too much time that I've been to, to, you know, using the, you know, correct word and everything, but let's call spade a spade right there. Our town government is pro-police. <laughs> it is, so. I like your uh, motion there or Miss Pat or suggestion to take a vote. So yeah, let's take yeah. a vote for. So Jen, if you could put up what Tyler put in the chat into I number eight. I do think Freke has his hand up as well. Oh, Freke. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention that in the conversation taking place, I'm noticing that we seem to be talking over ourselves and uh, part of um, what the rules give us is the opportunity to allow everyone speak and respond to what is spoken. So if you could just pay attention to that. Thank you. So for some reason, I can't just copy it. So I have to type it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Oh, I'm live typing. I'm so sorry. That is That's why okay. I'm under so much pressure trying to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're just fine. Yeah. 
Ah. Here, Jen, I'll try and help you out while you're live typing. I'll try and get the boat going by reading it off. So well, for I HR have to record that. Too. Oh, gosh. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Accountability. Okay, I, I feel oh, like there's okay. something missing out of that chat though. So Tyler, do you wanna make sure that I have that accurate? It's in bold under eight. Yeah, uh, I think it's pretty much word for word. Um, I mean, I think possibly the first part should be the resident or the um, oversight board. Uh, since I kind of was just abbreviating it when I typed it out, but I think it would be like the oversight board must be empowered to, and then meaningfully ensure i think i might have used a couple too many uh, adjectives and adverbs in there but um yeah it, it looks pretty much word for word so are we taking out the first part of eight and and leaving tyler's statement that's or what we're gonna vote on so that's what this vote would be hey. on okay never mind Does everybody see that? Because I, I rather, um, I need to stop the share. Mm -hmm. Yep. Thanks. Uh, Freke, you still have your hand up. Is that something to this conversation before the vote? Um, my apologies. I'm on my, using the phone. So that's okay, no, way I harder wanted, than the laptop. I just wanted to recognize you before we go into it. So Thank the you. motion. I appreciate that. I guess, Tyler, if you want to make the motion to add in the warning for number eight. All right, then I motion to replace the wording of point eight in the document under, I believe it is section two, discussing the residence oversight board for the Amherst Police Department um, to be changed from its current version to the oversight board must be empowered to meaningfully ensure accountability for the APD through effectual enforcement and investigative mechanisms. Second. I'm so glad this is recorded, but that was very thorough. Thank you, Tyler. That was, that was a really good one. All right, so HRC, then we are, will be taking a vote. So, Ronnie? Open for yes. discussion first, please. Oh, sorry, yeah. open for sorry. discussion. Anybody on HRC? None. None, none. Okay, so then we will go to vote. Ronnie? Yes. Laverne? Yes. Sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, Tyler. Yes. Liz. Yes. And I am a yes as well. So Your turn, Allegra. Okay. So, the SSJC members, the motion on the table is to replace number eight in. Paragraph two um, with the oversight board must be empowered to meaningfully ensure accountability for the APD through effectual enforcement and investigative mechanisms. And the no vote would leave the sentence as it is. Eight second. All right, so now the motion is open for discussion. No discussion. No discussion. All right, um, Ms. Pat. Abstain. Philip. Yes. Freke. Yes. I am a yes. So the motion passes. Um, 
and we are in agreement with with the Human Rights Commission, so mm -hmm. that can change in the document. Um, and we can move on to number three, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Oh, I closed it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> All right, so let's see, number three. Um, uh, Jen, if you could just, yep, I see you're doing it, never mind. Oh, wait, are you taking out the, the other part of eight just before we move on? No, you're going to do that. This is the official okay. vote. I'm going to scratch it out. I'm going to do this. Got it. So in terms of number three, organize a review of public safety protocols for responding to and handling public safety calls involving all residents, including minors, in order to recommend changes to these protocols if appropriate. Um, does anybody have any additions or concerns with what was already outlined in the document? Yes, I do. Yes, Ms. Pat. So um, again, CSWG recommended 24-7. Our police department has 24-7. I think that's what we should put. I hear, you know, the idea of 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. sounds reasonable, but our town is where resource, there is money to fund 24 seven press. So what I would like to see there is, instead of 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., I like to see it 24 seven, because I have to <clears throat> speak to what CSWG has envisioned with recommendations. So I'm not going to settle for less. Even if I'm in minority vote, it's okay. It has to be 24 seven, like it's not negotiable. The town has to fund 24 seven press program. We can't take less for, for an answer. Any discussion? Ronnie? I really so we're appreciate looking that. At number, number, what number Ronnie. is that? Oh. I really appreciate that comment because I had not thought about this. Mm -hmm. But actually, if Cress is to take over police functions, it does have to be available 24-7. So I think I'm I, I can see this point of just stopping the uh, sentence at after the parentheses and not having not offering the perhaps option, which I can I can see that because they'll never be able to really take over from the police if they're only working limited hours. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ronnie Tyler. Yeah, I agree as well, and I think it's especially important to have the um, overnight and early morning and late night hours, um, in part because if someone's having an emergency at that time of night, it's kind of especially important that they, they get the um, help that they need in the most appropriate mechanism possible. Because quite frankly, I mean, I don't have data on it since I haven't really studied it, but I'd imagine that if I was to be having an emergency in the middle of the night, then I'm probably under an especially large amount of stress. I'm probably sleep deprived uh, more so than usual. Um, and uh, I would especially appreciate having the most appropriate and the best match possible response and having less resources available in those hours, having Crest be entirely offline just wouldn't really make sense considering that its mission is to service more marginal and not quite everyday needs of emergencies.
Um, so I completely agree that Crest needs to be 24 seven. And I wonder if there's a way to kind of somewhat bridge the gap right now, like having on call hour, like on call 24 seven at this moment, because they're not fully staffed overnight shifts yet. But that again is the most looking at the leap report that that kind of like I think it was like really eight to two was really the highest utilized time and that's when they go offline um so I you know I don't know either I think it it's just crest needs to be 24 7 and that's the statement um or something to the lines of like on call services should be made available immediately while staffing is building up something like that to um so again i'm gonna say maybe one or pick a or b because changing the schedule from like on call and all that is going to include the union mm -hmm. from the crest department so yeah. you kind of it would be best and i'm only saying these things because i'm trying to let you guys know kind of how thing how that's going to play out like that is going to change everything from the union and then there's not much that we can do about that right um, so when i heard from the cswg about the crest program i was on the understanding that this was going to be 24 7 mm -hmm. and would replace certain calls that the police should not uh, respond to. So while I appreciate that the Crest program is up and running at certain points, I want the statement, as Ms. Pat says, that Crest needs to be 24-7 stop, period, yeah. end of discussion, that's yeah. it. And however the town needs to make that happen, that's, that's on the town. But Crest needs to be 24-7. Yes. So I move to change number three to just say Crest needs to be 24 seven. I guess, is there a second from CSS? I don't, I don't know that you have to make that motion because oh. the only reason why we had motions the other two times is because was because somebody basically called to ask for a vote to be done to kind of hash it out. But it seems like everybody's in agreement here. Okay. So I think yeah. you can just make that change. Okay, cool. Thank you all. I'm trying my best to represent CSWG. Deb is not here tonight, so I'm trying. And, and so where are you, where, what so is just supposed to be coming out or what strike, is saying? Strike while from number from yeah and so just strike the while and then strike everything after it says 24 7. so from to utilize to the end of that sentence okay put a period there instead of a comma <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anything so, else from number three? Nope. All right, then we will move on to number four. It looks fine to me. <clears throat> um, Ronnie, go ahead. Sorry. I actually was wondering if we know what fully funded is, because it would be good to be more specific in this piece. Like when CRESS puts forward its budget, what are they asking for? Because then we can say that's what they need to get. So the gaps we have right now, they don't have weekend shifts. They don't have overnight shifts. And in the... So, yeah. So maybe so we is, need yeah. to say fully funded and fully staffed 24 7. Yeah. Yeah. 
so that whatever that that's the funding that we think they need to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't know if they feel like they're fully, they're not fully staffed, right? So they would have to triple their staff because they'd need three shifts instead of one shift. Mm -hmm. It's possible that we could find a way to tie the wording to demand for Crest services so we could define fully funded as Crest being able to meet 100% of the uh, demand for its services at all times of day. Although I think 100% technically might be above what um, police departments are usually able to do, but um, I mean, I guess it depends on the jurisdiction because I assume that not every emergency department is staffed to that capability and there could be search periods, but I'd still assume that some sort of wording like that would probably make it the most clear what we're saying by this and the hardest to misinterpret uh, by the, either by accident or um, more deliberately. I, oops. I would say maybe if, if it read overall, the work Crest does is important and needs to be treated as such by fully funding and fully staffing, and then there in parentheses 24 seven based on, based on recommendations by the CSWG. Oh, Ronnie, you're muted. I just, you know, the CS, it's not the CSWG, it's the seven gen report had this wonderful chart that showed how you would reduce police uh, staffing gradually. So, you know, if something similar could be where Crest staff is increasing even, well, no, I'll go back. I take that back. I guess I'm getting tired. Uh-oh, <laughs> we still have a lot to go through. Let's <laughs> zoom through this. Is that Let's correct, move. Allegra? I think that looks good like that. Yeah. Yeah. Anything? Yeah, we have a lot to cover. Yeah. Anything else under number four? All right. Let's move on to number five. What is that? Mm. Oh, my God. This is a hot topic. <laughs> My well, comment is actually about four still. Oh, okay. There's a question at the very end of number two. I think we want to strike that out, which says, so who determines what's meant by fully funded and fully staffed? I think yeah, somebody, was, yeah. somebody was thinking that's gone, yeah. right? That has yeah, to be let's strike it out. Yeah. Thank you, Rani. Number five, then? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah. The big one. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. I don't have a comment. Please, 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 please. Let's take off number four. CSWG does not want to be associated with Jones Library Expansion and Youth Empowerment Center that CSWG is proposing. Jones Library will still have their youth center, but that's not what CSWG is recommending. Okay. Jones Library will do what they want to do. But there where, was a where, yeah. Let's there was start. another comment as well from Deborah to also strike number four. Oh, okay. Oh, she, she said that too? Okay. She, yes, she sent over a comment. Oh, okay. Okay. Are we, I'm okay with striking number four. I don't Yeah. No. It's very controversial. Go. It went into election. It's, you know, vote yes and no on Jones Library, whatever. Uh, it's not a project that CSWG, you know, endorsed so let's not even bring that in at all can i ask who the stakeholders are for section one? Oh, okay let's see section one you said yes point one section well paragraph five section one paragraph five 
it says there is no reason to gather further input from stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yes. So basically, 7 Gen was paid by the town to conduct research. They met with our youth. The stakeholders are the youth. They already did the work and they articulated what they want, what our youth want. They want a center. They want a, a safe space. So there's no need to, to be doing other research that our town wants to engage in. It's already been done. Just read the reports. I didn't write that, but whoever wrote it, that's how I understood it. I don't know who wrote that. I mean, so, but how are they supposed so, and I can't, I didn't read the CSWG, I mean, the Gen 7th report this time, so I can't remember off the top of my head, but like what activities and what's held in there has all been defined? Say that again? What activities are in the Youth Empowerment Center are, have already been defined? <coughs> what well, is housed wait, in wait, there? Because what? I wouldn't that fall under doing like, wouldn't that be part of something that they get from the research that they get from stakeholders? Like what, what do the kids want in the youth center? You can't just create it's a youth the, center. It's in the report. It's in the report, Jen. That's what I asked. Yeah. They want mentorship. They want academic support. They want just to chill out. They want, you know, whatever youth does, that's what they want. But they want it in a separate safe space. It's right. What they and, want. And I'm not arguing that factor. I yeah. understand that completely. I'm just saying, like, do they want basketball courts? Do they want a field? Like, all of that stuff has to come from research. So it's either you be a little more specific with that or or drop it, maybe, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Like, I don't think yes. that they're trying to go and find out if the youth want a center or not. I think part of it is, is that you can't just build a center and you say, okay, the youth want this. And adults, you don't want adults to plan that. You want the youth's input there. They already gave input to 7 Gen. It's already been done. We have public hearing at CSWG. And, you know, my recollection of CSWG discussions, uh, the, the youth center may not provide everything like, you know, either soccer group, you know, is it soccer? Yeah, or other sports. You know, we already have that in town. It's not what we're talking about. We're not going to duplicate in, you know, services with yeah, youth center. Yeah, but I yes. know that if my son's going to so go to a youth center, like, yeah, if my ahead. son goes to a youth center, he's going to want a basketball court to be there. So I, I'm just saying, or a pool table or stuff like that. And so what I'm saying is, don't you think we need to find this, we need to ask the youth for that kind of it, specifics is what I'm trying to say. It's already been done by someone, Jen. Okay. It's my, yeah. Ronnie, you have your hand up? Yeah. Um, actually, I'm just looking at the seven gen report. I have it on hand because I really enjoyed reading it. It's just awesome. Um, it does talk about multicultural centers where it speaks about um, youth center. And it says, it, it's, you know, it talks about community-based and culturally shaped programming and events open to all of the town of Amherst. It, talk some more about it, but not in the kind of detail you need for what Jen is talking about, which is, you know, if you walked into this youth center, what would you see? Like who would be there? What would they be doing? That kind of thing. Um, but it is strongly recommended in this report. So maybe, maybe the wording has to be changed so that it shows that it links more explicitly to the work already done. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, actually, what I would like the town to do is to start the implementation stage. How are you going to plan something without even locating space? Instead of doing research again, what do the kids want? It's already been done. But what I would like to see is for the town to focus on how do we implement CSWG recommendations to save time. And no. just that's just my opinion. Got it. Tyler. Yeah. Um, I think I'm a little bit concerned about the sort of stop the research approach 
uh, because I think it's important for uh, stakeholders and youth to be involved in all phases of the planning and eventual construction of a youth center. And that means through ongoing research. And I'm also a little bit concerned about relying too heavily just on what's already been done since especially as a project like this starts heating up more and more, then there'll be more potential to conduct broader scale research. And that means less risk that some of the earlier research might have been uh, less well represented, representative, since I know that some of the largest problems that can come up with this is for smaller scale studies earlier on, it might be disproportionately uh, participants who are already more engaged, already uh, more inclined to have their own ideas for how they would want to interact with this sort of center and more perhaps even viewing the center more positively and, leading, and needing less outreach specifically to them since those are the people most likely to respond to those sorts of community development surveys and join focus groups and attend um, meetings and such. So for that sort of uh, sampling reason and just to keep people engaged throughout the process, I kind of am not fully on board with the there is no reason to gather further input from stakeholders line. Liz? So this might be stepping on some toes or stepping out, out, out on a limb, but if I'm not mistaken, well, I know I'm not mistaken in the statement, which was we used to have a men's resource center and in that men's resource center, there was a lot of youth of color, men, young boys of color that were there to be mentored by men of color. It was Mike Funk, it was Julius Ford, it was Bryant Lewis, it was um, um, Edgardo, oh my God, cancel, counsel, counsel. It was a number of men. And when I, when I see in my head um, a youth empowerment center, I'm liking it to that type of um, structure where the kids went, um, all the ABC boys had to go every Wednesday and they got mentoring and they got um, academic support and they got, um, they were taken places that they normally wouldn't be taken on field trips and things like that. And I know through POKU that Mary Custard does a lot of that. These kids have been to Washington, D.C. They've been to the Holocaust Museum and the um, African-American Museum of Culture and History. They've been to all the monuments. We took them to the Museum of History. They took We took them to the Aviation Museum and the Native American Museum. And when I'm thinking about a youth empowerment facility, I'm thinking about all of that. And so we have resources in people who have already done some of this work. Um, and we have the youth who say, on top of that, here's what I'd like to see. So I'm not, I'm concerned that for whatever reason, we're not listening to those who have it in their mind that how rich this place can be once we find a space for it to be. I'm not sure if I made myself clear, but I'm just thinking out loud. No, thank well you, said, Liz. That's the thinking. Well said. Allegra? So I just wanted to say, yes, Liz, well said. Yes. Well said. Really uh, well said. It's not about sports only. Yeah. Life so skills, too. I just wanted to... I agree with everything that Ms. Pat said and everything everybody else has said. So I, I, I have a problem with the wording, there is no reason to gather further input from stakeholders, because I do think that once the center is implemented and up and running, it's going to be really important to continue to circle back with the youth and the people providing programming to say, like, what's, what's working, what's not, how can we make this better? I think that I think that the problem with the way that things were outlined by the town is that it's talking about, are we even going to do this recommendation, not what are we going to do once it's done. So I think that the, I, I agree that there's no reason to have further con 
conversation about whether or not this is needed. I think this has been identified as a need. I think that perhaps if we struck the thing that says there's no reason for further input, um, but said we should go straight to implementing the recommendations. I like that. I like that. Yeah. Um, I like that. And Allegra, I think that that's similar to what I was trying to say. I wasn't trying to say that it was only about sports. I'm just okay. saying, like, we have to get the input from the kids of everything that they want to have it to make them want to come to it, not right. just one set of things, but it needs to have house everything because that's how I think that it would be more successful, honestly, is if it can obtain everything, which includes mentorship. It includes, you know, a place to go, you know, play yeah. basketball. It includes a place to go chill out, a computer to apply for a job, all of that. It includes all, it's inclusive to all of that. So, And I'm going to stop if, talking. Oops, sorry. I was just going to say, I don't know if even making stronger the first statement by saying like the CSWG identified this as a need through research with the community, like to say like this research has already taken place and this is a need and it's been identified. So let's move along and implement it. I don't the know. Thing I, would... Yeah. The only thing I wanted to say very quickly is that CSWG also recommended that um, once the youth center is up and running, there has to be youth board that actually help staff make decisions. So it's not only staff making decisions for the youth, there has to be a board made up of youth, majority BIPOC youth. But the center will be for all youth in our town of all races. But the board will be majority BIPOC youth. White kids can also be on the board. I know CSWG recommended uh, that too. So how do we modify the, the sentence? Would saying something like the CSWG already identified the need for Youth Empowerment Center through community interviews? Um, for implementation? Yeah, so let's see. Identify the need for a Youth Empowerment Center through community interviews. Honestly, the next phase should be implementation. Like, yeah. yeah. Like they did with press implementation mm -hmm. phase. And then I think, yeah, we can go straight to the impl to implementation of the recommendations. Yeah. Or the implementation phase. Yeah, that, that's more concise. <laughs> Yeah, because the word research, you know, feels, I can't speak for everyone. To me, it, feel, it feels like, you know, reinventing the wheel again, like, you know, wasting time again. When the town already paid consultant to do the work for us two years ago. I don't know if maybe adding one last statement, like ongoing consultation, was recommended by CSWG to to ensure that youth's needs are being met, something like that to to say, you know, it's not, we're not going to never talk about this again. We're just, we're not doing the initial research phase because that's already been done. That's an important point because as you all know, each generation gets a little different. <laughs> that's right. So what's working for the generation that we have now may not work in four, five, 10 years. Is that correct, Allegra? I would I would say like ongoing community consultation or or something to to indicate that I think or even just like the youth board that Miss Pat just outlined, just like yeah. something because I think that obviously the CSWG was thinking about this and yeah, youth board was was recommended. Yes, and then.
feel like that sentence structure has to be changed a little bit more. So because you are you going to put in here that CSWG recommended a youth board and then. Yeah, we did. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was recommended. Yeah, right. I get that. But are you going to put that in here? Because otherwise it just says ongoing youth board consultation is recommended by this. Well, I guess that's fine. I don't know. I'm going to. Oh, well, let me see. Uh, what do people think? Ongoing youth board consultation is recommended. I'm looking at time. It's 8.40. Oh, my goodness. Long day. Mm -hmm. And my husband just came home, so it's almost time for me to beg off. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'll try. We got two more bullets. Come on, let's go. Please, please. <laughs> we I need do your see Bonnie, input, right? Bonnie has her hand up. I don't know if it matters, really. I thought that number two is long and that it could be could just the first sentence could just say the CSWG identified the need for a youth empowerment center um, under the scope of the DEI department. And then the next part would be, you know, to move on to the implementation. We recommend that the next steps, we support the next steps advocated by the DEI report, something like that. Yeah, that's fine. This can go on. It's it's really not even important anymore. Which one, number two? I was just simplifying number two by adding okay. um, under the scope of the DEI department, instead of glad to see that blah, 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 just the CSWG, if I'm now I'm going to number one, the very first sentence, Youth Empowerment Center under the scope of the DEI department. That's all. Oh, you're saying to strike from the recreation department? I was just clear of editing the language to make it tighter and to make it more okay. concise. So that's okay. It doesn't matter. So mm -hmm. strike number two and add at the end of the first sentence. And no, at the one, beginning of the, the scope. Of. Add, add at the beginning of the first sentence where it says youth empowerment center. The beginning of number one, first sentence. One. Add empowerment center under the scope of the DEI department. Oh, and I see what you're Strike mean. number two. Yeah, and strike number two, because I think there's just a lot of words there. And the but point I think is, it's but I think it's important for the for the public to know that our town did plan, did discuss openly about moving that's, youth. That's fine. Program. It's really yeah. not a big deal. Okay. You can remove my proposed edit. It's fine. Love the undo button. Okay. All right, number six. See nothing there. Then number seven. What is number seven? Number I see seven. six. Oh, seven, right there, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I don't we think that we have to go at, under, I'm sorry, under six. Do you think that you should add just, oh, it says within the town. Never mind. I read that wrong. But training for the general community should be ongoing. Like you can have an anti-racist staff, but if the people in the town are racist, I don't. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Consider yeah. ongoing. And council and staff. I will add business community. So number one, to town council, staff, business community. After staff, after staff. Town council, comma, uh, staff, and the business community. Because they get tax dollars from our town.
by business community, you mean like the, the, the chamber they bid, yes. Well, that that's not, I mean, I mean yeah, you mean all the, the businesses business. or just the chamber and the bid? Because those are two yeah. different things. The yeah. chamber and the bid because they hold all the power. So then we should if say we that make, that's if we what make you mean. Change, if we make change that level, it will have impact. Like, you know, looking at their board representation, look at how they are working with different groups, like Black Business Association, you know, and things like that. So no ongoing training for the community? So how do we define so community though? I'm fine with that, but you know- But how you do have to offer it. I mean- Sure, I but you know, is it realistic? Like, you know, how do we define, do we mean nonprofit organizations? Do we mean um, parents? You know, how do we define community? I don't know, but mm -hmm. I used to watch Sesame Street and community was everybody that was in the general area, yeah. including police, yeah. including the mailman, including the. OK, put it in. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's I fine. think it's important. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. All right. Develop a communication plan. You know what is missing here? Um, I don't know where we can stick this in, but it's been bothering me. Um, we have upper funds that was allocated for uh, people who may need to, you know, who are behind rent. And I have a copy of the federal APA rules. Nothing in it that stated you have to have eviction notice, three months eviction notice to get help to pay your rent. And so while our town did a great job in allocating fund for people in need, it is not working out for everybody. Some people want to be in good terms with their, with their landlords and they don't want to get eviction in order to get help. The policy of getting eviction notice to get help is for homelessness prevention. The upper fund is a little bit different. Yes, you can use it for that, but the upper fund said, you can use that money if you have hardship. So people may want to pay their rent may, and then have their car broken down. So my point is, I don't even know where to put this, but I've had committee members come to me and said, you know, there's no way they can tap I, into that fund, even though financially they are struggling. My point yeah. is the policy that was imposed it's unrealistic, it's discouraging, and people are hurting in this town. Somewhere here, I would like it, you know, put in that the agency that is handling this change their policy so that families and individuals can get the relief that they that they need. You don't have would, to, you don't have to owe rent for three months. If you're one I month would, behind, you know, I would say you can that get I, the help. I hear you, Miss Pat, and I yeah. completely agree with that sentiment. I think that in the language, though, about raise awareness and community about these efforts in this whole document, ARPA's funds is not mentioned at all. And so my concern with bringing up Ar ARPA funds is that it, it kind of comes out of nowhere in this last bullet point. And I'm not saying that we don't have to release a statement at all. I, I just don't know that to your point of where to put it, I don't know that it it belongs would be my argument right now. Yeah, I, I guess for me, it doesn't even have to be number seven. I think our response, you know, um, the town council created this just to put us in a pigeonhole. And we don't have to 
be in that pitching hall, I've struggled about, you know, where do I introduce upper funds? You know, black business community is, is hurting, you know, people who need to pay their rent, they're hurting and so on and so forth. It is part of um, equity. We're addressing equity here. Isn't that what we're doing here? Safety and equity and uh, resource allocation is part of equity. And our town, you know, has struggled to do, you know, to do the right thing. It may not be in this document, you may be right. I just want to voice it that I don't know another opportunity that we have, perhaps CS, SJC might do end of the year report of, you know, what our town has done well and what, you know, uh, they need to work on. If, even if we don't get it into this um, document, but it's something I've struggled with. Um, I would I would say that you could add child care services and stipends or child we, care reimbursements in that, no? Yeah, we, we have that in a different document, actually. The, our budget priorities that were given to the um, council president already, and we have a copy as a link to this document. We have that already, but nothing okay. about, about funds. Yeah, I struggle with that though. And I feel bad that it's not being addressed and I'm not blaming anyone. But if we're talking about equity, that should be part of the equation. I mean, this is our opportunity to do that, but it's almost nine o'clock. It is what it is. And we still have $2 million left for upper funds that hasn't been used, so. I, I would say that ARPA funds, I think we could send something out, CSSJC. Yeah, something, yeah. yeah. So then uh, moving on to the conclusion, Jen, can you just go up just a little bit? Uh, the first sentence there, in addition, anybody have anything to add? And I, I see in the comments of having an end time of nine o'clock, I think, Maybe we can agree to that. 10 minutes. <laughs> Anybody has anything to, I guess, add to that? And then if we're fine with that, then everything that proceeds in italicize is fine to, to have in there. And so I just, I guess to preface this, this was kind of a way that I thought we could show what the town council did not agree to, and then also introduce um, the statement from the families. Yeah. Because that was one of the things was that we would adopt a final right. official record. Yeah. Um, I, I like the addition of it. I don't know if anybody opposes the addition of it. It's fine with me. Maybe I didn't read this very well, but is there any way in this document um, where reference is made about how this came about? Because it was Alicia who had a motion and there was strike out. And then it came to this version, but it would be nice to, um, it's too late now, I'm tired, it's okay. All right, and then since we're fine with everything in italicized and the last sentence there, or last paragraph, and then I'll, I'll input the, um, the document from the families where it's highlighted. I left that highlighted yep. so that way I knew to put that in there. But <laughs> if yep. you get that to me, Miss Pat, then I'll- Yeah, I will. That. Yep. Uh, and then the last paragraph, uh, overall, this report aims. Are we referring to the report from town council? Right, okay. the Just point maybe, one through seven, yep. Yeah, maybe we could clarify that okay. since it's coming after the long yep. document. Or maybe, I don't know how long the document is, but maybe there could be some sort of like, 
separation of pages so that Anybody else? All right, then if that is it with no one else's hands going, then I motion for the HRC to accept all changes that have been done in this document. I will edit them as it is and send out a final report to HRC and CSSJC. Can I get a second? Second. And then we will vote. So uh, Ronnie, you just happen to be the first person on my screen, yeah. so go ahead. Okay, yes. Laverne? Yes. Tyler? Yes. Liz? Yes. And I am a yes as well. So that passes for HRC. All right, for CSSJC, I move that we accept the proposed changes to the document and use this as the final version to be submitted to the town council, um, allowing Philip to make the changes discussed um, prior to sending it. Yes. <laughs> Do I have a second for CSSJC? Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, voting, discussion, voting. voting. No, discu oh, no, no discussion. discussion. Anybody else have anything to say before we vote? Yeah, I'm yeah. too tired to call Philip out on the discussion. <laughs> <laughs> um, so starting with Freke. I was just going to say that uh, we may not get all that we want, but I think we've done a good job um, discussing and coming to a broad agreement. Specifics might differ, but on a broad agreement. And I appreciate the time that is spent this evening. And so I vote yes. Thank you, Ferke. Um, Philip. Yes. Ms. Pat. Is a yes for me? It's productive meeting. We got it done, accomplished. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, and I am a yes, so it passes for nothing for CSSJC. Awesome. So Thank I you just, all. yeah, CSSJC, can you um, dismiss? And then, Ronnie, I just need two minutes of your time before you get off. Uh, like, I need two minutes of the HRC time. Oh, okay. Um, Are we? We want to close. CSSJC adjourn. So it is 8.56 and I am adjourning the meeting of the CSSJC. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Yeah. So HRC right. members, um, we just quickly need, um, so we're doing a timeline. So the, the archivist over at the Jones Library is um, creating um, a timeline of Amherst from 1600 to current for Juneteenth, or actually it's 1749 from when we became Amherst. And I wasn't sure if folks felt like we could do that on a national level as well. And seeing how we already have a timeline mapped out from the um, Black History Month, although it's music-based, it does give a, a lot of highlights of the important time times in, in history. If members who are not going to be actively participating in the event itself could contribute to creating the timeline. And this is for Juneteenth, right? This yeah. is for Juneteenth, which will be June 19th. So what I, I need is, I need the members to kind of help with that. Yeah, I would be happy to help. Um, okay. I don't know anything about, I'm really bad on history because I didn't study it in school not a musician, so somewhere in there, if you can find something for me to do, I'd be happy to help. That would be great. Yeah, and T Tyler, are you able to? Because I know that you're still away, so this could be how you contribute as well. Yeah, uh, I finally figured out when I'm gonna be back in Amherst, which is on June 12th. Uh, so I should be there for that. Um, yeah, I 
I mean, I'm now hitting finals, so uh, which is kind of going to be for like a bit over the next month. Um, so what sort of time commitment would it be for the uh, timeline project? Yeah, I think that the timeline project for the national history of uh, of the African community American community is a little more easier and will be less time consuming than trying to limit the history from Amherst. So um, I, I don't have a good idea, but it's like, you know, obviously 1600, you know, it's things like when slavery was first enacted, right? And then kind of you definitely need to include the civil war in there and then you've got the Jim Crow laws mm -hmm. and, and you know what I mean? Like we're kind of going to move like that. So what I would say is whoever's going to help with that, you guys can think of a creative way to divide that time up, that time frame up. So if there's two of you, then maybe you guys can cut it. So one, uh, one of you are doing like 1600 to, I don't know, like, somewhere 1800s and the other person's picking up 1800s to current does that make sense no. or 1900s you're just call, asking us because we're here but somebody else could do it right like i know somebody who is a great historian who would love to vol i don't know if he'd like to volunteer his time but i could talk him into it i don't you know however you guys come up with the yeah. timeline so is you okay take with anyone me. right you'll take <laughs> anyone right yeah. somebody yeah, like me i could do the research but i don't know stuff so like i don't know the things that i didn't since i didn't grow up in the american education system it would take me a lot longer to find stuff that everybody knows yeah so i would and they benefit have... from learning from the timeline but i you know i mean putting it together i know somebody i could ask who i think would be great so if it's not doesn't have to be a human rights thing then you can assign it to me and i can find somebody to if it's yeah. okay for somebody else to do it the other thing is there's some really good timelines online that you can look at that break it kind of down to the most mm -hmm. historical points mm -hmm. and you can move from there but i yeah. don't really care how it gets done or who yeah. does it i just yeah. don't want to do it and oh yeah um, sure i i'm happy to help yeah and I didn't mean to say I don't want to do it. That sounded bad, but I, I don't. And so Tyler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that I can help with it as well. Although with the caveat that since I'm approaching finals, my time is going to be pretty heavily limited until the end of May. Mm. Right. Would it be easier if you did like from 1900 to current? Does that make it easier or no? Um, it depends on how much detail we would need since I know the, like I know enough of the history of Jim Crow to put together something possible, but I didn't really study American history much since like early high school. Uh, so I, it would still, to get like a large amount of detail in it would take me quite a bit of, um, I don't know, I might be able to, um, but I'm a little hesitant to risk accidentally over committing myself. Uh, yeah, I'm, if, if no one else is available, then I can definitely try to do it and see what I'm able to get done. But it's, not really the greatest time of the year for me. Nope, that's okay. And I anticipate you out there on Juneteenth. So Ronnie, since you have someone who you feel like you can work with to, to mm -hmm. create this timeline, do you um, have an issue with taking on the entire timeline or? Yes, I cannot take the entire okay. timeline. Um, All right. But you can give me some old period, like the 1600s or 1700s. I don't know what, how you're breaking, what makes sense to break things up, but you can give me some time in the past because I think the person I'm thinking of, aka my husband, uh, is really into history in general and knows a lot about American history already. Okay. Um, all right. So, yeah. I, no, Jen, I think 
one, you're not going to do it by yourself. I think we'll send out an email to HRC for members that are not currently present yeah. and see if we can pick it up there. And um, yes, we'll go from there. And yeah, actually, if you group it, if you divvy it up and say there are like five sections, we can sign up for a section, maybe. Okay. I would do that. That would help me. All right. That sounds yeah. good. And I can include the timeline from the Black History Month, too, because it gives mm -hmm. a little bit of a guide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Sounds perfect. Awesome. All right. That was well all done. I needed. All right. Thank perfect. you, everyone. HRC meeting adjourned at 9.03. Oh. Wait, but well, youth here youth here awards are oh. still on May or, or June eleventh. Eleventh. June eleventh, yes. We were having a basketball tournament and a youth and a youth here awards. Right. And then the following weekend we have Juneteenth. Just wanted to throw that Bye -bye. out at people. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yep. Bye. All right. Thank you.